Hey, how y'all doing? Listen, um, this is a little bit of a follow-up video. Some time ago, I did a video on witnessing, and I talked about what witnessing is all about. I gave a Bible scripture on um, what it means to be a witness. You know, um, you can be a witness by observing something, hearing something, um, being a part of something, what have you. That's one way of being a witness. Um, you observe or you hear or you, you know, you're in in a place where you know what happened, you know. Um, that's what witnessing is all about. Um, now, you also become a witness by becoming a part of something. It's like being saved and being a part of the household of faith. Now, because you've become a part of this thing, God commands us to go out and witness to others or tell others about what we experienced. You know, the Bible says that we are to be ready to give an account of the hope that's in us. You know, the Bible speaks about deacons. It say that they should be apt or ready to teach. To teach what? To teach the word of God. Many times, many times, um, many Christians, you struggle in witnessing. Because you don't really understand, you know, you really don't understand what witnessing is all about. And it's somewhat no fault to you. You see, if you've never been taught properly, then partially it's not your fault. But the other part, it is because you are commanded to study, to show yourself approved unto God. So, for those of you who just rely on your leadership to tell you everything, whatever, it's your fault. If you don't know how to witness, it's your fault. Now, if you're a baby, you got to be taught, okay? But how many of you know that little babies, when they like one years old, one and a half, whatever, they already learning how to pick up a, a spoon and dip it into the food and put it to their own mouth? You know, you've been in Christ five years and you still a baby is something wrong. It's something wrong. So let's dive into this. Uh, let's just say witnessing uh, 102. We had 101. Let's call this witnessing 102. All right. I want to, I want to, I'm going to show you what witnessing is all about. And I'm going to give you some examples, okay? I'm going to give you some examples of how Christ witnessed. And then I'm going to give you some examples how we can very easily witness. Your life is a witness. The Bible says we are living epistles that men read. You know, here in this book, this book is loaded with epistles, okay? The Bible says we are living and breathing and walking around epistles that men are looking at and reading. So you always run and walk around and tell my son, don't judge me. Ain't no need in looking at me. No, 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 no. The Bible says that you are a book. You're a paragraph. You are an example that men are reading. Now, you either a bestseller or you <laughs> or you need to be cast out the back door and burned for people that's cold and let them warm themselves up because you know, some books are good, some books are are horrible. Are you a bestseller? Are you a bestseller? I want to read you something before we get too deep in it. 
The book of St. Luke, chapter 24, starting at verse 44. Luke 24, starting at verse 44. And he said unto them, speaking of Christ, and he said unto them, these things, I'm sorry, these are the words, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know why I said these things. Let's start over. St. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written where? In the law of Moses and in the prophets, okay? And in the Psalms, concerning me. So Christ was saying, look, everything concerning me that's in the law of Moses, in the prophets, what the prophets said about me, in the book, in, in, and in the Psalms, okay? They all got to be fulfilled. Verse 45, then opened he their understanding. So then Christ just did another miracle. He enabled them, okay? He empowered them to understand. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, okay? That's what have to happen to us. Paul prayed that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, okay? That's what has to happen to us. Now, when you witnessing a lot of times you're witnessing the people that don't have the spirit of God, okay? So the eyes of their understanding is not enlightened. So when you go to them with all this scripture, a lot of times you lose them from the very outset because they don't know all of thee, thou, and this and that. Some of y'all saying, well, that's why I use the, the, the NIV and that's why I use the, this one and that. They still don't understand it. Because it takes the spirit of the living God to understand. So see, Christ had to open their understanding. Now, when you're seeking after God, you're a sinner, but you're seeking after God. And, and, and all of a sudden, your understanding been enlightened that, man, I'm a sinner and I need salvation. He opens it up. So when you begin to look into the word and you begin to seek and search for him, that's how you're able to find him. Because he opens himself to you. So look at this, verse 45. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Verse 46. And he said unto them, thus it is written. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached. In his name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And look what verse 48 say. And you are witnesses of these things. Now, verse 49 says, and behold, I sing the promise of my father upon you. Okay. But tarry or wait you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So here we are, okay? Here we are at a point where, you know, we supposed to be witnesses. But there's some things that need to happen, okay? The same way their understanding had to be opened, our understanding need to be open, okay? Our understanding need to be open. Now, he said, now, look, look, it's written and it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. But now listen, this is a part of what your witnessing need to be. You need to let them know how Christ did suffer, but he rose on the third day. But also, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. See, 
when, when, when you are witnessing, I'm talking about actual talking to, you know, people and, and telling them about who Christ is and this and that. See, a lot of people say, okay, the gospel, you, when you witness, you got to teach people and you got to tell people about the gospel. And then you say, well, what is the gospel? People say the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Now watch this. If you are, let's say you got somebody at work. Okay. You met this person at work and, and you really feel compelled to begin to share with them, you know, the hope that lies within you the hope of glory, the salvation, how you've been set free from the bondage of sin, all these things. Now, you getting ready to share these things with them. But all you know is, you know, the death, burial, resurrection. Are you actually going to go to somebody that, that don't know Christ? They ain't got a clue who Messiah is. And you're going to just start talking about death. I mean, let's think about it. Death. Somebody dying. If you're going to talk about his death, now, so you're going to talk about how he died. Is that really a, 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 a conversation you think somebody want to hear? What you think about? It? Hey, hey, um, you know, um, man, I'm living this type of lifestyle and this and that. And it all started with death, man. You know, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you about the man who saved me. Let's talk about his death. Nobody want to talk about that. Burial. To bury somebody in the ground. To bury them. Most people don't want to talk about death. They don't want to talk about the burial. Burial is just so final. It's like, it, you don't push dirt on it. I mean, it's over, over, over. You ain't going back to dig them up. The death, burial, and resurrection. Excuse me. Now you're going to talk about somebody. You're going to talk about how they died, how they whipped them, they beat him, they did all this stuff, nailed him to a cross. Then they took him down off the cross. They buried him. Now you telling me that man that was beat to death, buried, got up out the ground. After three days, he rose from the dead. That sounds so far-fetched to so many people. And it's almost not even fair. Almost. You see, you didn't even really understand it till after the Holy Ghost came. You don't even understand it. Because, see, once we get a grasp of death, burial, resurrection, then we can understand baptism, you know, water baptism. You know, then we can understand how we too uh, were dead in trespasses and sin. How we too were buried in sin, buried in the dominion of sin. And we can also understand how we, like the scriptures say, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Set your affections on things above, not on things of earth. You can understand how as he rose from the dead, we are risen, okay? Also, in newness of life, we get to understand all that, but it takes the Holy Ghost. It takes the Spirit of God for us to really grasp a hold onto that. We can give a mental, you know, like... Uh, think I can, you know, just mentally, I can kind of understand what was happening. With, but when the Holy Ghost come, that thing becomes solid in us. But now for the unregenerate man, for the unsaved, for those that have not been redeemed, okay? Those that are buried in sin, trespasses and sins, those that, 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 that are, 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 are dead men and women walking, how do you witness to them? Let me give you a couple examples. Okay. Remember the blind man that Jesus spit on the ground and made a clay and put it on his eyes and everything. That story is over in John chapter nine, St. John chapter nine. When Jesus 
dealt with that situation. He was blind. So everything Jesus dealt with him concerning the witness to this man realizing who he was and everything, he dealt with blindness and him seeing. Not being able to see and being able to see. Okay, when he dealt with the woman with the issue of blood and you find that over in Mark chapter five, verse, you know, 30, right? You know, in, in Mark chapter five, that whole area. And then in Luke chapter six, also Luke eight forty six. Now, when you when, when, when he dealt with the woman with the issue of blood. He didn't run off all these scriptures from, from the, the law and the prophets, all this stuff from the Psalms. and all. He didn't do all that. When he dealt with the woman with the issue of blood, all these people around, all these people coming out to see him and everything and people bumping up against him and everything. And he stopped the whole procession and say, who touched me? Not who bumped into me, not like who, who just got a feel, you know, just, wow, he's a, he, you know, he's a man like we men and you know, this, and that, no, 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 no. This was a touch of, of, of need and, 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 and hopelessness and, and, and desperation and, 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 and it's like, I just feel like if I touch him. I can be made whole. What do I have to lose? I'm not even, with this issue that I have, I'm not even supposed to be around people. But I got nothing to lose. I'm dying. I'm losing blood so fast. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm bleeding out. I ain't got nothing to lose. Let me get in here and just grab the hem of his garment. Okay? And what did Christ say? Whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't start quoting scriptures and everything. He said, somebody touched me uh, in a very special way. Somebody's heart, somebody's, somebody's desperation, somebody's dire strait, somebody's need touched me. Somebody touched me with their need. Somebody's heart, somebody's whole soul, heart, and mind it touched me because virtue left out of me. Not all these people bumping into me. No. Who touched me? And then he dealt with the woman. Woman, your faith has made you whole. Talked about her being whole. Not being um, um, afflicted no more. But being whole. Jesus dealt with her situation. Let's talk about the rich young ruler. You find that story over in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 22. Talk about the rich young ruler. When he dealt with the rich young ruler, what did he talk about? Number one. So first of all, he said, why you call me good? Ain't nothing good with God. He say, if you want life, keep the commandments. He said, which ones? Christ told him, I'll tell you which ones, you know, the ones like honor your mother, your father, you know, don't bear false witness, you know, this, that, you know, he gave him like, I think it was like five of them. And the, 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 the guy said, look here, I, t I kept all of them from my youth up. And he was right because Christ didn't, didn't rebuke him. If he was a rich, young ruler, it was very easy for him to not bear false witness. He got it all. What he got to lie about? He got it all. Uh, 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 well, let me turn to it because I love, I absolutely love this because I've heard so many pastors over the years just jack this up so bad. I'm talking about, oh, he was lying when he said he kept the commandments. He didn't lie nothing. Those things that, that Christ told him to keep, they were so easy for somebody that's rich and young and who's a ruler. It was so easy. Here it is over here. Verse 17. And he said unto him, talking about Jesus, why call me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. <laughs> the guy said, 
Which which ones? Which? Jesus said, Thou should do no murder. Why does he he's young? He ain't murdered nobody. Thou should not commit adultery. Again, he's he's young. He probably ain't even having sex. Ain't married. It don't say he's married. Thou should not steal. What do you got to steal for? He's rich and he's a ruler. Thou should not bear false witness. What do you got to lie about? He got all the power. He's a ruler. Honor your father and your mother. That's easy to do. Well, young kid, they tell him what to do anyway. And thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Come on, man. That's easy. And look what he said, verse 20. The young man said unto him, all these have I kept from my youth up. So what lack I? You know, what, 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 what am I lacking? <laughs> Jesus said, okay, I'll tell you what you're lacking. If you're going to be perfect, go and sell that what you have and give it to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. See, Jesus' witness to the rich young ruler was about what he had, wealth, okay? Jesus is giving us these examples. He's showing you how to witness. You got to stick with what's happening, okay? You don't see where Jesus went back into the, into the law and the prophets and the Psalms. He dealt with the matter at hand. That's how you witness, y'all. What about the woman at the well? Samaritan woman. That's found over in John chapter four, verse five through 26. All those different issues, they at the well, Jacob's well. Jesus asked if you give me a drink. Hey, wait, she like, whoa, 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 whoa. You being a Jew, why are you asking me to give you something to drink? You know y'all don't have nothing to do with us. See, Jesus, the scriptures say he had to go through Samaria. See, Jesus was getting ready to bridge that gap. He was getting ready to, 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 to bridge that chasm between the Jews and the Samaritans. Jesus had to bridge it, let them come together. And so the whole situation that was dealt with, if you read it, and I give y'all a chance to read it, is talking about um, the water, talking about the well, talking about... Um, uh, uh, where they worship, you know, Jesus said, Hey, you know, no, she was like, Hey, we worship in this mountain. Jesus said, well, the place to worship is in Jerusalem. He said, but let me tell you something. The time is coming where you ain't going to worship in Jerusalem, nor are you going to worship in these mountains, but the time is coming. And now is where the true worshipers Worship in spirit and in truth. See, Jesus was bringing all of that stuff right together. Uh, sweetheart, go get your husband. I don't have one. You're right. You don't have one. And the one that you with ain't yours. You See, Jesus, when you witness, man, you got to stick with the program. Okay? Let me give you another one. Let's talk about the money changes. What happened in that temple um, over in Matthew 21 and 12 and over in John uh, 2 and 14. What happened with the money changes? Huh? The Bible say Christ's custom was to go to the temple and, um, you know, get the books and, and read, you know, read the, you know, the, the, the law and the prophets read. That was his custom. And then he go in there and he see them buying and exchanging and selling. You know, if Christ came to a lot of these churches today, he would find money changes. Y'all are always around and talking about some, oh, the Lord was really in this place. But when Jesus came to what's considered his father's house, he ran roughshod in there. Y'all in there selling chicken dinners and selling books and selling CDs. I mean, taking y'all take the word of God 
Y'all take the word of God and put it in the form of, of, of your own teaching, a book, a CD, whatever, and then sell it to the people. Let me see if I can find this scripture. I want to, ooh, I hope I can find it. Let's see. Oh, God, I want to find it in Jesus' name, Father, please. I want to show you something. I want to show you something, Father, please let me find it. Oh, please, let's see. Oh, here it is. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 10. You got a little bit of wisdom in the scriptures. Somebody asked you to come teach at their church. Well, I come, but, uh, you know, I, I got to have a thousand dollars to come. Thousand dollars to come preach. I, I, I want to read you something. Read you something. Matthew chapter 10. Follow with me. Verse four. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who was also, I mean, who also betrayed him. Okay, talking about the, the 12 disciples. Let me go ahead and just start at verse 12. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them. Now, Jesus commanded his 12 disciples saying this, go not in the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter not. Now, this, Jesus, the one that bridged that gap. So he was telling them at this time, don't go there now. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is what he commanded the 12 to do. This ain't got nothing to do with you. He commanded the 12. See, you got to stick with the program. Stick with the thought. This is what he commanded the 12. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying. Now, they told him what to say. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he told him this. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. I mean, tell him, look, don't avoid these people now. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. This is what I'm getting. Freely you have received. Freely give. Okay? That's the part I want to get to. I'm telling you to do all these things and don't do it for money. Don't pray for people for money. Don't, 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 don't give people a word for money. Don't preach for money. Don't, he said, freely you've received. So freely give. He sent them out. Okay. Now, this was one of the times he sent them out. And he told them, look, you know, he say, um, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. In other words, now, wherever you go, don't take this stuff because I'm going to show you how I provide for you. Don't take none of this stuff because the workman is worthy Okay, he's worthy of what? His meat. People say he's worthy of his height. This says he's worthy of his meat. In other words, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to take care of you. Don't take two coats because if it's cold, somebody's going to give you a coat. If you're hungry, somebody's going to feed you. Okay, you don't need to take no, no, no staves because if you need a staff or stay, some, I'm going to move on the hearts of people. They're going to give you that, okay? If you need a coat, somebody give you. If you need shoes, somebody give you shoes. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm going to bless you. I'm going to show you how my hand is on you. Now, the other time he sent them out, you know what he did? He told them, take this stuff. Because now when you go out, you're going to bless. But I'm trying to get y'all to see something. The point I'm making here is in verse 8. Freely you've received, so freely give. Okay? So when it comes down to this witnessing, when it comes down to witnessing, I have a dear, dear friend of mine, um, Mr. 